Hello everybody, welcome to a brand new video on this channel. It's been a while since I uploaded. Uh, I actually really want to make this video for you guys because I think it would be a very educational video as well as, you know, kind of like a, a video where a lot of people can really understand what it's like to be in my position because I know a lot of people come out to their parents right away. For people like me, I have, they know I'm transgender. They know all this stuff, but I have not, I have yet to talk to them about it. And um, it's been since November of last year since that has happened. And to me, it's it's to me it's been way too long. It's almost a year. And to me, it's like, okay, I'm gonna, this whole entire conversation is gonna determine whether I'm gonna be talking to them for the rest of my life or not. So we're gonna see what happens here. And um, I'll be recording it all. Hopefully, I can get everything just for educational purposes and for people to understand. Uh, you know, maybe some things to say, some tips because being trans is, it could be different, but we all have like some similarities to each other. So yeah, see you guys later. Okay, where do I start? Um, okay, so I'm gonna start talking about, you know, the transition thing, part that you guys, I want you guys to understand, is that I've been going through this since I was five years old. Um, not in ways of that anybody could really see or understand, but I'm sure you guys have seen a couple of signs that I've put out for you guys. And the signs weren't signs of me just trying to tell you something. It was just me, like, naturally doing it that way, you know. Um, since I was five years old, I, um, well, right now I just got diagnosed with uh, gender dysphoria. And it's, um, it's a, it's a condition where I'm born with the opposite brain in my head. But I was conditioned so all my childhood to be a boy. But I just, I always had those natural things about me that wasn't necessarily a boy. And uh, that's what I kind of come back, it came back to me now as an adult. Because um, when we're all, you know, when we're all being born, you know, we all start off in the, in the processes as women or girls. And then we, you know, you develop into a boy of a woman, whatever, or a girl. I got too much estrogen and my brain never developed into a boy's brain, which is why it's scientifically proven that people that are transgender have the opposite gender's brains. And that's why, for, cause for me, it's mind over matter. So whatever I feel like will make me happy is what I'm going to go for. And when I figured it out and I kind of started piecing it up because of Halloween, which I don't know why I wanted to dress up as a girl for Halloween, it just kind of like naturally came into my mind at that because I did not dress up for three, three years. And um, when it came into my mind, I kind of like, well, when I first came out, I kind of was, I was thinking, am I really transgender? Am I trying to get attention or is it a phase? So I was, I, I sat there and I thought about my life and I started retracing everything about what, what popped up as, which, what, what pointed me towards being transgender. And everything popped up from the way I acted sometimes. You know, there was a phase where... Uh, and I, we always asked you, and and you denied it. We and, always and, would say, no, no. And so that gave us... Yeah. Like, you, you mixed us up. Like, then what's going on? Yeah. But it, we always did ask you, you know, questions, and then, you know, you always said, oh, no, no, that's not me. So that gave us like Yeah, I'm sorry. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So what well, we didn't know. Mm -hmm. So when you came for Halloween and you and we're like, Oh, he's just trying to get attention. It, you know, what else were we supposed to think? Yeah, and the reason why I came today was because I was like, you know, if I I can't expect them to talk to me if I ain't talking to them. So I said I need to come over here and talk to you guys about it. So you guys can understand where my on my end of what is yes. going on. So, yeah, my entire life I have been different. I just didn't know how to... Really I knew you were always different, Andrew. I always asked you from from your finger things. You always were, when you were make a, we would watch football, you'd go out there and you'd make a football field. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, you wouldn't just go play football. You'd make the whole field. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you'd put the numbers. And, and, and I knew you were different, way different. When we got you, when you came to live with us, I, I just see he's, he's either going to be very, very smart person 
or he's gonna be goofy. Something's going on because you were mm -hmm. you were smart. I knew you were smart. You're a smart kid. You got your your schoolwork. You 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 did it, and it's you know you you did good grades. Yeah. But I always knew, especially when you started writing your book, I knew you're you're very smart. You're a smart person. So whatever was going on has to be something that's in you. Yeah. Something we cannot Und tell you. Understand unless I were to tell you guys myself. Right. And I mean, even from the time, you know, you asked me to show Noah how to use the bathroom, remember? And yeah, it's kind of embarrassing, but I sat down and you're like, what are you doing? And I'm like, use the bathroom. And then you're like, you don't sit down. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but to me, that was how I was naturally using the bathroom the, all my life. And I, I didn't know the difference, but to me, that's why, how I did it. And, I, I, you know, even when I was little, I, I was attracted to feminine things. I mean, even Marie noticed one of the times when I was walking like this, I would walk like this a lot without knowing it. And someone would point me out on it. It's like, don't do that. It's gay people do that. And I never thought of myself as gay. So I was like, I'm not gay. So but I didn't know what transgender was. I didn't know that you can actually go from a male to female or a female to a male. So I was like oblivious so to what that I, meant. I, so you did all your research on this? Yes, I did many re uh, much research. Because at first, I was very, um, just like you guys, I was very, un I didn't know what to think of it. Because at first, when I first came out, I came over here as a cross-dresser at the time. And at that time, I was thinking, am I, is this really who I am? I feel like... Like, I'm just trying to get attention. But then later on, whenever I, uh, I, I think it was my uncle, one of my uncles in my, on my uh, dad's side of the family said I was disgusting and all that stuff. And so I said, well, delete me then. And uh, that night I, I went to the movies and I, I, I came out to Bernadette. And I said, because uh, something in my mind told me that I, I'm not a boy. I'm not a, you're not a boy. Say it already. And I, and I came out to her and because she kind of like helped me come out without knowing it because she joked around about it and like it let me know that she wasn't like all oh, like oh my gosh if you're like that you're, you're getting out of my house or whatever so I, I came out to her and I said it to her and I said it to her in front of her and Anthony I think and um, and I said on Facebook because all my you know my close family like you guys weren't here in, were in Socorro in Alfredi, you guys were in Socorro so I figured maybe if I go on, on Facebook and do it but I was always afraid to come out to anybody else, unless like, um, you know, they were there. The only person, the first person that actually really was supportive of me was Wesley, which was surprising to me because Wesley and I, we, we grew up a lot together, you know, uh, me as a boy. But he's always been, he said he was really supportive of me and he was always going to be there. But um, to me it was coming out at the time and it was very hard for me at work because I had to go through it at work. And I was going through a lot of where people didn't understand it. People didn't want to understand it. People act like they were cool with it, but then they would act. Like I was being treated a lot differently. So I went from one store to another. Then I went from that store to another. And this store is okay because no one knows me as Andrew or Steven. They know me as Charlotte. And they treat me like a woman. And I get treated like a woman almost like literally everywhere I go, I get treated like a woman. I don't get, ever get called sir or anything. Uh, everywhere I go now, it's everyone calls me ma'am and all that stuff. And, Mess and there's a lot of a uh, lifestyles is a lot different being a girl than a boy, a, a boy because especially the way treat, people treat you because that's what I've noticed. But when I first came out, I told my boss, I'm just gonna wear eyeliner to work because he's like, Well, I don't know about the makeup thing. And it just this is whenever I thought I was a cross dresser and I started wearing eyeliner and then I had to wear more and I had to do more things and I had to do more things. And I could not stick to one little minimum. I had to continue to continue to transition without even knowing it, in other words. And, um, you know, it even went from, you know, I would dress up as a boy during the day, and at night I would dress up as a girl. And it was a living Bernadette. And I was at that point where I, I didn't want to be at night, I wanted to be full time. And that's how I knew exactly that I was transgender, because I was like, this has to be who I am because I'm not, I don't want to be a boy anymore at all. Like, it's just, it's not in my head anymore. Like, I'm much more happier like this. And I've become a lot more of an open person in public because of that. And I do know there's a lot of people that have kind of left me in my life. 
My Aunt Julie's not my friend anymore. And she, well, um, my, right before Grandma died, they were upset over me because of me. She said that we're, I'm not here to say that I, me and your grandma, uh, she said that she couldn't uh, bear looking at your videos of you coming out like that. And that was the night before she passed. And it was very upsetting. And uh, she said, I still love you and all that stuff, but then she was different. I can tell. She was very different. She did not support any of my posts anymore like she used to. And I began to, like, just, I deleted her. I said, you know what, if you're not gonna, if you're not gonna accept me now, then why, why should I sit here and accept you? So I, I said, you know, if you want me back, you'll add me back. And people were adding me back, and I lost a lot of friends on Facebook, and but I've gained so much more. I've gained friends all over the world, on, on, on supporters, and in the words, and I've helped at least 15 people so far, you know, come out to their parents, whether it's being transgender or gay or whatever, and they've all thanked me, and even their parents have thanked me uh, for, for helping them out, even whenever their parents were religious people. And they didn't believe in what it was like, uh, or being gay. But it was, being who I am is more of just of a decision. It's more of a, me kind of figuring out and realizing, since I'm an adult now, I make decisions for myself. I've made very strong decisions in the last couple months. I, I've gone strong about the places I live in. And now, uh, Crystal got on Facebook again, added everybody, except for me, Monique, and, and uh, uh, Marie. And uh, I guess that's why I overheard Marie, uh, 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 Monique said, Marie said that Crystal wasn't uh, accepting of it, she did not like it, and, but uh, Marie says she's accepting and I can go wherever I want to go visit. I, I know that because she always follows my stuff and so does Annika. But like I, um, I was kind of upset with, uh, with Crystal at that moment because I was like, kind of grew up a lot of my years with her, you know, like could at least talk to me about it. And, she, and me and her have been like, I even tried adding her on Facebook, and she and what is, me what is Anthony? Anthony? Uh, he doesn't mind. He just, they kind of transitioned like as smooth as I did. Uh, him and, uh, it was a little hard at, for, at first with Noah. Mm -hmm. Uh, but Noah kind of accepted it after a couple of weeks. Anthony accepted it right away. He, uh, they all call me Charlotte and all that stuff. And, and uh, so everything's smooth with them. Uh, Monique said it was, uh, she kind of got used to it and she got over it and all that stuff and she doesn't care anymore and, and you know Bernadette I thought she was okay but at first she said she said at first it was kind of hard for her and she wasn't accepting of it but then she got used to it because I am not the same person as, I am the same person but I am more who I'm supposed to be now and, you can, and people can see it in me that's why a lot of people know me as Charlotte now and they can never see me as you know, as a boy anymore because of the way I am. Not that I'm going to be like all girly over people now. It's just the fact that, like, to me, it's like I'm finally able to be who I am, so I'm taking advantage of it, of being who I am, especially living in New Mexico where it's a little more open and I'm <coughs> happy with uh, the results. And of course, my life's not as easy as it used to be. It's very hard, but it's, um, I have to live with it. And that's why I'm going through what I'm going through. I've already taken hormones. I've already, I'm already on laser hair removal surgery. I'm looking forward for two more surgeries, major surgeries, in the future. But to me, that's for me to be happy with who I am. And for me, like, even long distance, like, for relationships, like, I kind of opened up more. And I realized that, hey, I like girls and boys. So to me, it's like, it doesn't matter who I'm with anymore, as long as I like them for who they are. And that's how a lot of people have been for me, you know. A lot of people like me too. And I've got a lot of friends, and even my ex-girlfriend came back into my life. Not as a relationship kind of way, but good, good friend. So, to me, it's like, I got a lot of supporters. So I'm not afraid of losing people, in other words. I'm not afraid because I've already lost so much. And I can see who goes on my stuff and looks at everything and just spectates everything. But doesn't say anything to me. And I could see it through my social media tells me all that stuff. So I can tell. So for me, I could tell who's very supportive and who's not. And who's like, wants to be supportive, but they don't know what to say. And that's why sometimes I'm trying to make the effort that I go to, to go to Socorro, come to Socorro. I don't come here all the time, but like, for me it's been very hard. I'm barely figuring out who I am, and it's very hard to come down to family and 
and, and see everybody because it's a whole new light. And um, for me, it's like even pronouns. It's hard for some people to sometimes start saying she and her and all that stuff. And and you know, even with Bernadette for a while, she was saying he and him, and I would have to correct her every single time. So I'm not a he and a him. I'm a she and a her. And everything kind of like it's all working its way. Now I don't ever get called a he and a him. It's very rare. If I do, it's someone that's known me as a he and a him. Everybody else just kind of lets me know, like, and that's kind of like what makes me feel better in, in public is when people do notice that I am I'm, I'm a female. And yeah, I may not be, have everything a female has, and I might not be able to have everything a female I would be able to have. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of females out there that can't have kids, or they can't, um, you can't, they can't have their menstrual period. But to me, it's like, um, you know, even though I would love to have those, um, to me, it's about who I am as a person, because I'm going to be honest, like, when I was a very young kid, I always thought about myself in a spiritual way, spiritual way as a girl, and I don't know why. I never thought of, like, I always thought maybe, like, maybe that's my mom, you know, maybe my mom's my angel or something, but I always saw it, and then I finally figured out, well, okay, I'm seeing myself as a girl, so why is that? So I, I, I know, because I've gotten tested on, like, God, what happened what happens to love of God. One of my old friends in the business said, what happened in your relationship with God? And I fought her for it. Because I know for a fact God made me this way for a reason. He made me transgender for a reason. To to live out these two lives. You know, one as a boy and the other as a girl. Um, in a way of helping myself and someone else live their experience. So for me, it's, it's me and God wants me to figure out who I am. As a, as a part of my journey in my life that he's given me. So when people ask me, well, you know, is that, that's not accepted or anything, I know for a fact God wouldn't make me this way if he didn't accept it. And, and you could take it from anybody that's transgender. People in the Carl that I never knew were transgender are all coming out to me now. Now that I, I came out and everyone's coming out to me now. And I didn't know anything about anybody else being transgender. Either. And they're everywhere now. I see it everywhere. People that say, oh, they've known someone that's done that, or someone that's been parent, or someone that's been there. So for me, it's a lot more comfortable to come out a lot more, because all I want is just people to accept me and treat me like I was, you know, a human being. And that's I've always I'm told people that when you're conceived, you get something from your mom, you get, and what makes you the baby. They all unite, and you get pictures from your mom, you get pictures from your Everybody's born different mm -hmm. because so many of these factors what forms you to be a man or woman. And just like you said it right in the head, all it goes, your brain is formed as a female and somehow you got cheated into not having the female parts and God gave you all these male parts. Yeah, it's like <laughs> and that's just the way you were born. Everybody's different. Exactly. Everybody's different. And there's people that are born overly male. I mean, they're way overly male. And then there's some women that are way overly women. It depends on how all these things were conceived and how they all form and what made you, your own individual. You got five, six, if you count uh, Isaiah. Mm -hmm. two, two, two girls and three boys, you know, and everybody's different. My daddy always used to say, look at my hand. We all come from the same hand, but we're all different in our fingers. You know, we're all different. Yeah, sheep's and sizes. We're all different. And um, you got to go with what you got to go with, you know. Exactly. That's your decision. That's what you have to do. Nothing that I can say or do or some people may attack you negatively or some people may accept you. Some people may say, oh, no, deny you. You know, everybody's different. Mm -hmm. uh, I never knew much about transgenders in my family, but now you're the closest one to be in my family that is going through this phase. Yeah. When I when I was very young, I remember Tony, uh, probably your uncle Tony. I don't know if he was. You can call him your uncle. He was very gay and very femaleish, and you can see it right away. The minute you walk into the room, you can tell that he wasn't a man. But he was wearing a man's body, but he was very, very feminine. Mm -hmm. And I didn't, I didn't hate him for it. You know, that was what Tony was. 
And I missed him because he died kind of young, you know. So, you know, yeah. God bless you for doing, I know you're going through difficult times. Everybody goes through difficult times. You're going through probably difficult times that's unique because of the fact that you're, you're trying to follow what you want to do. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that's what I keep telling your mom. I mean, your auntie. I, we're like your mom and dad anyway. Well, so. Yeah, that's, I don't know. Because, mind. you know, when, when your mom passed away, you know, the, somebody needed to take care of you. I always hoped that your dad was strong enough to keep you guys all together with him. But apparently he was too weak to do that. He couldn't keep the whole family. That would have been the most ideal thing to do. He would have had all kinds of help to keep you guys together as one family. Mm -hmm. And raised you as a family. But, you know, a lot of things happened quickly. Your know, mom passed away too young. He decided to find some other lady, and then he made a baby with someone else. Very nice lady. We met him, and he's, uh, he's in high school now. And, you know, things just go super speed, you know? So, I don't know. Yeah, I know what you mean. I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm still gonna love you because you're, to me, it, it's a little stressful because it's like death, you know. We see, we're seeing Andrew die, but we're seeing uh, Charlotte be reborn, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> so it is kind of like, you know, all my life I got used to being more like a, a boy, you know. And now that uh, now that it's all coming out in my mind and how are you explaining it, yeah, I saw a few things that were a little bit strange about you. But girls can be tomboys too. Yeah, that's true. There's but nothing wrong with girls playing baseball. You see them all the time, playing mm -hmm. baseball, doing boy things. So I never thought of you as a super athlete, but I, I thought of you as somebody who's really wanted to be good at what you wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And right now you want to be good at what you want to do. <laughs> You just don't want to be a girl. You want to be a good girl. You know, you want to yeah. be, uh, you want to be the best you can be. So you know, you have to admire people that want to be the best they can be, whatever whatever journey they decide to go on. Mm -hmm. And this is what you want to do, and this is where you're gonna go, and go for it. <laughs> and I will, yes, um, because there was only there was only one reason why I didn't like know when I was a kid because people thought. I was gay or something. Mm -hmm. When being gay is who you go to sleep with, and being transgender is being go, who you go to sleep. That's a who major part. That's about, about the major part of the sexes, you know. Yeah. We're all born to reproduce and make babies and carry on our name and blah blah blah, you know. You know, Andrew's got five kids and Paul doesn't have any kids. <laughs> and Rowena's got adopted two and she had one. You know, mm -hmm. I think she would want to have some more, but I don't think. At her age right now, she's not going to have any more kids. I think she, this is enough. She thinks as Wesley as her own, and she thinks as Ambriel as her own, because when they had a relationship early and became man and you know, together as a couple, mm -hmm. they were little babies. So yeah. they really know Rowena as a mom more than the real mom. Yeah. And like you say, uh, a lot of us are born to do that. When I was a little kid, I always knew I was going to, I was probably going to end up adopting kids mm -hmm. rather than having them. Because... I even had I even had this little notion that when you got bigger, that maybe you would be the glue that bring the whole family together, you know. Mm -hmm. But you know, that was just my little fantasy of you know. I've always wanted the best for your family, all five of you, to be the best, you know. Yeah, it's hard. I I always see potential in, in in Crystal. She has so much potential. Good looks. I think she had good smarts. She had a. She she was able. She had the ability to do a lot of things. Why she ended up where she's at right now, I don't know. That's why I've been spending a lot more time with Monique lately. Because I go to Monique and we just we just talk and we hang out and you know, Moises in my dilemma. It was Moises has kind of went over, oh, went away, from whenever I uh, I lived with him before. And Moises is very accepting of me too. I'm I'm very surprised. I was kind of afraid to be seen in front of Moises, but Moises was really cool about it. And he's like, well, whatever, you're just. It's your, it's, it's and how your about your other uncles and your, your, your other uncles? Uh, you talk about Ernie and and uh, I really and Danny and, and uh, no, your your grandma Lola's son. Oh, the oh that one. That one of them told me I was disgusting. Yeah, that's that what was, I was gonna say. Okay, so you got a lot of negative from them. from them. You stay away from those people. I do. 
Um, my, my, my auntie Julia, I don't talk to anymore. I actually stopped talking to Isaiah, half-brother, because he was laughing at all my posts, and someone, uh, someone messaged me and said, what's up with this person that keeps laughing at your posts? Like, cause they would put those laughing re reactions on my pictures. And I said, that's my half-brother. And they're like, I'm mad at, they're like, I'm mad at, um, getting mad at him because he keeps on putting that on your, your post and that's not, it's not cool. And they started commenting on that and stuff and Monique got mad at him. And then, um, he said, well, this is the way I was raised. You know, I was raised around, you know, the Bible and all that stuff. And his mom was, uh, got an argument with Monique at the time. Um, uh, and after that, like, we were okay, but they, I could see the difference between how they were treating me. And they were never, uh, like looking at my posts anymore, and I was like, "Yeah, never mind." I, I just I deleted them, and they never added me back. They never did anything, so I I, I, I presume they didn't really care either. But to me, it was like it was, it was very hard. A lot of family members kind of like left me, but a lot have came into my life that I didn't know. Like M Michelle Lesperanza, Lesperanza, she's come into my life, and she's a very big supporter. She's Her, your cousin. Uh. I, I don't know if it was, uh... What are you talking about? Uh, Michelle Lesperanza? I don't know exactly. She's, uh... She's either a cousin or an auntie. I don't know. Oh. Um, but she was at, um... The funeral for, uh, Grandma. Okay. So um, she's on their side of the... Yeah. But she was a very good, uh... Very big supporter. So is Bridget Faye. She's always, uh, you know, talking to me. She wants to hang out with me all the time. And then, uh... Um, a couple of others that I don't, I didn't know anything about until they added me on. And Bridget Facebook. is? Uh, I think it's like, uh, she's something about for, to burn it at. Gen know. Genevieve's daughter. Oh, Genevieve's yeah. daughter, that's right. Like, you know, yeah. And she was a great supporter. And she's, yeah, she's a person. She's a person of yours. Mm -hmm. Well, the girl put your, your mom in the group. Mm-hmm. But see, to me, it's like, uh, and that's why I, that's why I cherish Bernadette a lot because Bernadette told me about how mom was and and she would like be kind of like my number one source to how mom was when she was uh, alive and stuff. And um, I don't know, um, a lot of things just happen, and there's nothing I really can do about it, especially when it comes to like family not accepting. Because a lot of the family that didn't accept me were family I didn't even know, really. Like, they, well, they weren't in my life. don't worry about them. You shouldn't... Don't worry about them. Worry about the people that do care about you. Yeah. I don't understand it, but I'm still not going to throw you to the street. Okay? I'm kind of like... I don't, I don't know what to think. But you coming over here and explaining things helps a little bit. Mm -hmm. But... You know, you have to live how you're going to be happy. And that's why I came over here, because I care about you guys way more than I well, care Well, you about have to that. live and, and be a good person, and that's what you have to do. And no matter what you are, you still have a soul. Mm -hmm. That's what's going to go to heaven, not your looks. It's your soul, your soul. And if you're a good person, you'll go to heaven. Exactly. That's my, that's how I see it. Yeah, exactly. I always see it as like, you love God and you let God love you. And you be good to others the way God would be good to them. Because that's what matters the most. And that's why I didn't like it when people would assume just because I'm transgender. Because they don't them. understand either. And now, yeah, of course, I got a lot of hate from people. Um... No death threats, thank God, but... Well, be careful about that. Because if you guys don't know, the, the the murder rate for transgender people is 9%. I know, I know. And the suicide rate is 40%, which is skyrockets between normal, like, you know, you know, cisgender people. So, but for me, I'm not a very suicidal-minded person anyway. So to me, it's like, don't worry about me, like, getting all upset over being trans, other than the fact that, you know, don't get me wrong, I went through a lot of harsh Well, there's times. a lot of haters, yes. Mm -hmm. I, I went through a lot of harsh times at work. The Before this this job area, the other job, I would cry a lot. I would cry a lot because of the way uh, some... Because it was early in my transition, people were kind of like... They kind of saw me as like... Some people call me a freak. Or people would get mad at, at me and not tell any 
uh, tell me anything and I have to hear from another store saying, oh yeah, they came over and said some weirdo or some of this thing was selling me this. And I'm like, I'm not a thing. And I don't know why they hate me and they don't even know me. Like, right. like, and that was the hard part. Now it's like, it's a little different. People treat me a lot more like a female. Like people, like I always get the door open for me and all that stuff. But to me, it's like, um, I do get treated a lot more differently than I did at the beginning of my transition when I was, you know, wearing my wig and all that stuff. And, I was just trying to grow out my hair at the time, and the and I went to the company that I'm working for. I went to the main office to the owner, and I argued to him about my hair because I told him I want to grow my hair out. I want to grow my hair. Out. I want to wear this wig, and because the salespeople are supposed to keep their hair short, and I had the biggest argument. Well, I didn't have it with the uh, the owner was kind of quiet, but I had a big argument with the HR, and finally uh, I left, and he said um, we have to talk to our attorneys. I said, well, when does your attorney come in? And he's like, Monday. I said, good, make it quick. And I walked out, I said bye to the owner, left. Went back to my store that I was working at, and he called and said, you can wear your work. Because the thing is, there's a lot of there's a lot of legal things that can happen. Like, especially when people like treat me wrong, or they, they, right. call, me, they call me, they'll call me Steven, or they'll, if they call me a he, I can, I can make them lose their job that way. And I don't want to do that. And people, and I think it's like more of a, there's a legal thing that if you if you if you misgender someone in public, like on a purpose threat level, it's a, there's a two hundred thousand dollar fine for it. Cause it does out me, but to me it's um, it's not that big of a deal. Sometimes it's just for me. It's like everybody has to work on them. But if you don't know me, then there's no reason why you should be messing my pronouns uh-huh. anyways. Cause you don't know me. Um, but I've experienced a lot of different things. Like for the first time, I went to a girl's bathroom. Could uh-huh. not do it. I it was hard for me. And my friend, she kept on pulling me in there. We're at church too, full church. Bathroom was filled with women, and I was afraid. And I told her, no, I don't, I can't go in here. And she managed to pull me in there. And no one left any, no one did anything. So now I'm used to it. I, I I go to the women's restroom everywhere, and no one says anything to me. So I'm very happy with you know how I am being treated in public now, because a lot of people give me compliments. There's been people that are not even transgender that come to me and talk to me and say how thankful they are for someone like me and that there's some parents that have kids that are transgender that tell me I'm such a good role model for their kids and stuff and that's why I take my support group so seriously every single day because they're the ones that have been showing me support and love through my posts through my messaging messaging me and I have seen it in them a lot of people saying oh I want you to come visit or I even got invited to a baby shower in Texas, but okay. of course I had to work, so I couldn't make it. But you know, it's stuff like that, little things like that, and it's even being called a, a she and a her. Like being called a girl is what makes me feel good. It makes me feel happy that I'm finally mm-hmm. being seen. Well, that's it. You have to be happy. Mhm. So be with yourself. And I do know there's a lot of people that probably don't accept me, like uh, Christina, yeah. because she was arguing with. Uh, he was burning about him, but she del- uh, she said uh, one day on Facebook she said, "Well, you gotta be who you gotta be," and the next day she deleted me on Facebook. So to me, I was like, you know, it, it, it's fine, you know. If they're probably gonna see me again in life, you know, whether they like it or not. But to me, it's like um, it's like I think it's more gradual. It's gonna start coming more and more. People will start understanding it. The more and more like the people see it, like the more I tell you guys. Maybe it might branch off a little more here in Socorro that people understand a little more. Some people won't understand. But yeah, of course, the same thing. Some people won't understand and it's fine. But the thing is, we live one life. If you want to ruin my my relationship with you as like a family member over one thing, well then, that's your one life lost from me. So, you'll never see me again. And that's to me, it's like, you know, it's a big thing to know that we only have one life and that's why I just made the decisions that I'm making because I have one life I'm not how, gonna how do you think that your mom would see that see you I think my mom would have had trouble at first but I think that because there's something about her and recently you. about me like I could feel her a lot more yeah. that she would be like very fun with it like she would kind of like after she got to accept me she would um, be fun like she would be creative with me about it yeah I think to my dad it would have been a little harder. Yeah, I think he wouldn't. Yeah, it would have been. He probably harder. would have denied it, you know. Yeah. So I don't know. He would have. But my mom. Disowned I, you. <laughs> but I 
I think your dad would because he's so. That's the way he was. Yeah, and especially the way the family is now, like his side of the family, how they look at it. So God knows if he would have been different about it. But uh, I think my I think mom would have really uh, she would have had a little bit of you know kind of like a misunderstanding about it. Like, but then I think she would have loved me just as much as anything. She'd have been more ha happy if anything, because now I get to be who I want. I've always wanted to be. Yeah. And um, you know, um, and I, I said, well, you have five kids. There's one to be bound to be different, you know what I mean? Huh. Um, but to me, it's like, it's just something I, could, I should be ashamed of. I'm, I'm happy. Everybody's happy with me. The only thing is, I may be sometimes a tough person to live around because my hormones are... I'm basically going through a second puberty, so I'm gaining... And do, do you, what kind of doctors are you seeing that will give you this? Um, uh, the doctor I see is actually transgender. Uh, he, uh, he is a female that went, is going to male. So, uh, he helps me out with my... Like Augusta. Uh, huh? Augusta that way. Yeah, Augusta. Uh, he, he helped, he helped me, um, get on, because they gotta diagnose you first. You can't just go in there and get hormones. You gotta go through, like, certain things, like therapy and all that stuff. And, and you then, from then on, you get diagnosed. And I was straightforward with him. I just wanted everything right away. I wanted to start. <coughs> and, um, I met a lot of transgender people. And um, a lot of them are cool people. Some some of them are like, kind of like a little bit weird to be around. Not because they're just trans, because of the way they act. Because hormones mixed with alcohol or whatever, not a very good mix. Because believe it or not, taking hormones just give me a lot of health situations. Like for instance, I'm sterile now. I can't have kids. Um, I don't know when that's supposed to take effect. It depends on my body. Uh, my body shape is beginning to change. So I grow more, my fat goes where fat will go on women. Uh, I'm growing obviously, you know, breast tissue. Yeah. Um, my hair is getting thinner. My skin got a lot more softer. I lost a lot of my acne actually. I haven't got any acne in a long time. People have seen it. Mm -hmm. um, so like I said, I got a lot of curves, my fat goes in different areas, and then, you know, um, I'm going to laser hair removal so I don't get any more facial hair anymore, because that's a pain, and I don't like worrying about it. Um, but basically, that's what my hormones do for now, until I go to surgeries. The surgeries cost a lot of money, they're like $18,000, and right now, I'm trying to grow my support base enough so I can, so I can get people that want to support me, support me. Cause that, I have some favorite YouTubers that are trans that raise up twenty thousand dollars in like six months from their supporters and that help pay for their surgeries because. Um